Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and in this video I once again want to talk about rendering tables with Flask. I wrote an article and a video about a year ago about this topic and there were two very common complaints that I had about the project that I present at the time. So I'm going to get right into it and I'm going to show you a new version of those examples that I created back then that address those two concerns. The main concern that people had is that the table that I presented did not have an option to edit cells. So this new version you can see here that allows me to edit some cells. In this case I created the editable uh, style only on the name and addressed columns. The other ones do not have it. Uh, so this is the main one. And then the second one was that the JavaScript library that I used, which was data tables.js, required the use of jQuery, which these days not a lot of people use. So the request was how to do how to render a table without using jQuery, which unfortunately is impossible with data tables.js. So what I did for this refreshed version is to switch to a different library. This is based on grid.js. I'm going to show you the project. This is gridjs.io. Very nice plugin. It, it's actually simpler than uh, data tables. So if you found data tables very complex, then GridJS might be interesting because it doesn't have as many options, even though it con contains all the options that I've used in my previous example. So everything that was available before is available here. That includes sorting uh, on different headers. In this case, I explicitly disabled sorting for the phone and the address. This is done on purpose. Uh, it supports multiple sorting if you use the shift key as well. Uh, it can do searching. So here I can restrict and the search can be configured to only work on certain columns. I believe in this example I'm only searching on the name and email but not on the other three columns. So that is also possible. And finally, there is pagination as well. So this is working very efficiently. In the most advanced example, which is the one you're seeing here, the JavaScript side requests only the rows that it's displaying. So it's constantly sending requests for new pages. And all the processing for the paging, the searching, and also the sorting is done in the back end uh, using Flask and in my case Flask SQL Alchemy even though you could make it work with anything you like. So I'm going to just quickly show you here you can see the the Flask application running and these are the URLs that you receive in the back end and these have a sort field then a start length these are for the pagination and where is the search? Here's the search. And there's also a search when, when you type something in the search box. So very quickly, I'm going to show you the code. And for this project, I created a bunch of examples going from the very simple to this one, which is the most complex. Uh, so if, if you want to learn this, I recommend that you go to the GitHub repository you can find the link in the in the description below and then start start from the easy one and then go up into the more complex ones. So for the complex one, which is the one that allows you to edit cells, there is a number of things here. But the important thing is that the grid class creates the table. You define the columns here. For certain columns, you apply custom attributes, and this is what makes cells editable. You apply the content editable attribute. This is not part of the grid.js library, by the way. This is a 
standard thing in HTML. You can make any uh, any element in your page uh, content editable, and then that means that when you click on it, it allows you the, the browser allows you to edit it. So that's how these two cells or these two columns have cells that are editable, and then you can figure the server URL. This is where the GridJS table will request data and uh, what else and then you have search sort and pagination sections that define what the url should look like when those options are used and then comes the editing portion which is something that i done myself this is not part of the gridjs library and this is based on the on, on listening to events for, for this editable uh, property of HTML. So here I'm looking at the focus in um, event and in that case I save whatever was on the cell when when it gets focus which means that the edit box will appear. So I save it in case I then press escape which will cancel it. So I save it in the focus out. I send a request to the back end to store the changed cell this is so that the database can be updated. And then the key down event looks for enter to close the editing and basically save the, the data or escape to cancel it. So that's pretty much it. And here you can see how it works. In this case, I'm changing it, but then if I press, I press escape, then it goes back to the original value and then I can press enter to save it or I can also press uh, or, or click elsewhere and that saves too. So when you click elsewhere then uh, you, you get a save as well. So there you go. I, I hope you like this. I have a repository with all these examples and once again the examples are uh, let's see, we have basic table. This is the most basic one. Ajax table is an improvement over the basic one that requests the data separately. And then we have server table, which uses the pagination and then the, the library requests one page at a time. And then finally, editable table is the one that you've seen here that uh, on top of the server driven table adds the editing for cells. And then uh, what else do we have? We have a create fake users utility. This is a script that creates the data that, uh, that I use here as an example. It creates a bunch of records using, uh, using fake information. So anyway, uh, look for the GitHub repository URL in the description or in the blog article. And I hope you like it. Bye-bye.